didn't say it quite right. See, God trying to keep you in a certain box. You see, you ain't going to surely die if you eat this, but you become like him. Live forever. And you know, we all want immortality. Look how this snake works. See, in the Bible, say the serpent is more subtle than any beast of the field. I'd like to show you a snake. And when you go home, I want you to take a good damn look in the mirror. I want you to hear what I'm about to say. See all this holy BS? I want to say it like right, you know what I mean? But I say holy BS. All these false creatures that want to make people think they're so holy. I want to show you a snake. And when you go home and look in that mirror, I want you to see yourself. Don't look for no other devil because there ain't a damn devil nowhere that can ruin your life better than you are ruining it right now. Now you listen. Deceptive intelligence. See? Rationalizing disobedience. God say, lower the hem of your garment. You say, well, sure, God is right. I'll lower it, but then I'm going to make it tight. Well, I really, want, I really want the brothers to see how fine I am. See, that's deceptive intelligence. Rationalizing crap. Let's, let's go a little further. See, if you look at all the mess that you and I have done in our life, and there's a whole lot to look at. How did you get so screwed up? See, you had a whispering devil from within yourself. That used deceptive intelligence. Yeah. Well, look at look at that. <laughs> to rationalize what was improper, incorrect, and sin. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yes, sir. Hmm? And this deceptive intelligence makes evil fair seeming. When you use deceptive intelligence to rationalize disobedience, what are you doing to yourself? You're beginning to rationalize an unjust conclusion or an unjust assumption. And on the basis of an unjust assumption, you do an action. If the assumption is wrong, then the action is unjust. So we say in our prayers, I have been greatly unjust to myself. And if we are unjust to ourselves, nobody else stands a chance. Now look, when you can rationalize an unjust assumption and proceed on the basis of that assumption, you are acting against your being. You are acting against your own existence. You are acting against the purpose of your existence. And in that action of deceiving yourself and rationalizing disobedience, it has a blinding effect on your consciousness. It has a deafening effect 
because after that, you don't want to hear nothing that challenges your unjust assumption. See how we play games with labels? I'm a Christian. I'm a Muslim. I'm a Jew. The hell you are. You ain't none of that. You are what you think. And you are what you carry into practice. And if you could put our thoughts on the table and look at them. Now, if I'm hurting your feelings, then you can go home. But that's not my intention. My intention is not to hurt. But I want to force us to look at ourselves. I have a duty and an obligation to my Arab, Muslim, Christian, and Jewish brethren. You may misunderstand and think that I've abandoned you because I have a duty by them. I have a duty by Africa. I have a duty by the Asians. I have a duty by the Native Americans. I have a duty by the Hispanics, and I also have a duty by the whites, and I have a duty by the government of the United States of America as a warner to them. And you can believe it or not, you have the same duty that I have. But you that don't live in America, what is your duty? What is the duty of the nations of the earth outside of America? You got a duty. What is your duty, China? What is your duty, Asia? What is your duty, Africa? What is your duty? You all have a duty and an obligation to help us in the West. The Jews, the Christians, the people of the book, you have that duty, and I must point it out to you. The Quran teaches, and when Allah made a covenant through the prophets, certainly what I have given you a book and wisdom, then a messenger comes to you verifying that which is with you. You shall believe in him. You shall aid him. Allah said, do you affirm and accept my compact in this matter? And they said, we do affirm. Allah said, then bear witness. And I too am the bearers of witness with you. And whoever turns back after this, these are the transgressors. Seek they then other than Allah's religion? You know what this is saying? Every nation on this earth has received a prophet. Otherwise, the Quran has lied. Then if every nation received a prophet, then Allah took a covenant with the people of that nation through their prophet, that when that one comes to you verifying what is with you, And every one of you today will hear me speaking to you in your own language, out of your own book. Whatever you believe. This is a whole hemisphere that has never heard the word of Allah. Talk to me, Muslims. How are you going to tell me 
that a whole hemisphere never heard the message of Allah and then dare to tell me that a messenger should not be raised who will be a messenger of the message of the prophet. This Quran has to be taught. And you are not the ones to do it. Allah never raises up somebody among the people unless they speak the language of that people. It's wonderful that you know the Arabic language. I wish I knew it. One day I will learn it. I can't read Arabic. I can't write Arabic. Neither can the people of America. So all the Arabic that you know is not going to help you transmit the message of the Holy Quran to them unless you can meet them in their language and understand the mentality of America. <laughs> that is the job of Imam Warathuddin Muhammad and myself, we have that mission in America. And nobody can take that from us. your Quran, look in your Bible. We are fulfilling what is written in the Torah, what is found in the Gospel, and the wisdom of the prophecies in the Quran is being fulfilled in the West, in the West, in the West, and we are that people, and you are to help us in this mission. We need your help. We need your help. But you can't guide us. We would go to hell if we let you guide us. I'm sorry. You don't know how to guide us to wake up the man in America. That's not your job. Your job is to help those of us whom Allah has guided and given that message. As long as God give me life, 
I will testify to the greatness of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And now to just wrap this up, that man against all odds, all odds, built poor black people into something. He knew how to handle us. We were slave mentality people. He knew that. So he had to run a tight ship and crack a heavy whip because that's the way you get slaves to move till you can give them the mentality of a free man and woman. He took us from the dope den, from the wine hall, from the pool hall, took these sisters who had been cheap and low life and made them clean. Forced us to respect ourselves. Didn't he? And he made us industrious. That even though we were the meanest of the people, he did something with us that nobody else had ever done before him. But that was not his mission. That was the beginning. So many of you misunderstood him. You say he was a racist. He taught hate. That man was a supreme scientist. He said, what Allah has revealed to us is the base of a universal knowledge. A universal knowledge. He said, it's not that now I'm still here preaching. He said, but it will become that. What did he mean? I'm here now, he said. It's not universal now, but it will become universal. What base did he lay that is universal? Let me help you to understand very quickly. Elijah Muhammad was sent to us with a specific duty. We as black people living in America had been made by Caucasian society to hate ourselves. Elijah Muhammad could not deal with the real you before he dealt with the outside. If you hate being black, I first have to make you love yourself. So the wise psychiatrist, the master psychologist, went to work and said, the black man is the original man. He didn't tell a lie. No, sir. Genetically, biologically, mathematically, anthropologically, historically, he's right. There's no Caucasian that predates us. There's no Chinese or Japanese that predates us. Sorry about that, folks. That's just real. God says in this Quran, that he made one man and from that man he made all of humanity and that man in the Quran is called Adam and the Quran said he fashioned Adam out of black mud into shape. The Quran bears witness that Elijah Muhammad told the truth. Look now, wait a minute. This ain't no racism. No, sir. Why you have to say that, Elijah? I have to say that because Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told his followers on his last pilgrimage, there's no superiority of the white over the black, or the Arab over the non-Arab. The best of you is he who is most careful of his duty. According to a reliable hadith, Prophet Muhammad told his followers that if a leader comes up whose skin is black, mm -hmm. 
and his hair like dried raisins. Bring it, brother. Follow him. All right. He's telling the Arab world, you got hung up, Arab, on your color. You don't respect the black man. The black man is disrespected by all of humanity. Look at what Nakasone had to say. He's our Japanese brother. <laughs> but don't have respect for black people. I don't blame the world now for not respecting us. But we haven't done anything in a long time to earn respect. That's true too. But in order for God to set the record straight, he has to help humanity to see your root is in the very people that you disrespect. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad on the back page of our newspaper, then the Muhammad speaks, now the final call, in point number 12. He said, and I quote, we believe that Allah came to us in the person of Master W. Farad Muhammad, the long-awaited Messiah of the Christians and Mahdi of the Muslims. And lastly, we believe that there is no God but Allah and that he will set up a government of peace wherein we all can live in peace and brotherhood. Many of the scholars of Islam have said to me, Brother Farrakhan, why don't you take that off of the back page? Many of my Muslim brothers and sisters who love Allah and love Prophet Muhammad and love the Quran said, this is un-Islamic. Take it away from the page. Allah never has appeared in the form of any man. Allah is not a man, but they can't tell us what he is. I want you to listen to me. I intend to talk to all of you, the scholars of the world of religion, Jews and Christians and Muslims, and whatever your religious persuasion may be, we've got to know today who is God that we may not make a mistake and serve other than him. The Bible teaches us that he made man in his own image and in his own likeness, but he's not a man. The Bible teaches us of Allah or God that he grieves, he sorrows, he sees, he hears. The wickedness of the wicked stinks in his nostrils that he loves, that he hates, that he walked with Enoch, or Enoch walked with him. The Bible teaches that he met Abraham in the plains of Mamre. Three men came to Abraham, and one of them, the Bible says, was the Lord. But he's not a man. Sarah came out of her tent and said, Lord, if I have found favor, pass not away. And Sarah comes out and says, Lord, if you are hungry, I will feed you. But how can you feed a spirit? She said, sit down, Lord, if you are tired. How can you sit down if you have nothing to sit down on? You say, yes, Brother Farrakhan, but that is the Bible. I'm not finished with the Bible yet. The Bible said Moses walked with him and spoke with him face to face as a man speaketh to his friend. Hmm? 
all throughout the scriptures of the Bible. We're not dealing with some spook or formless spirit. We're dealing with a man. Well, what about the Holy Quran? The Holy Quran is not dealing with a man. No. Huh? But the Quran uses the personal pronoun I. I belongs to who? Talk back to me. The Holy Quran uses the soft pronoun we. Does God have associates? Does he have partners? Why say we? If God himself revealed the book, he knows best the language. Why did he use the language of a human being? These attributes of the Quran are not the attributes of a spirit. He's beneficent. He's merciful. He's powerful. He's the life giver, the sustainer, the securer, the destroyer. Spirits don't do that. Men in whom the spirit dwells do that. Who is God? A lot of science to the teachings of Elijah Muhammad. This was not some crazy man that made up something. He met a master and a master taught him. And now he has left me with the job yes. to represent the master and him to you and to the world that you will never be able to gainsay those teachings ever again in life. Now to any Caucasian who is present, we never exalted color on the earth before you came. We never judge people by color. That is a new idea fostered and brought into existence by Caucasian people. But God said, let it be.